Far too often, music and its creation are associated with men. Most of these men have been deceased for centuries, yet society still considers their faces to be the collective face of music. The lullabies played to ease babies to sleep are the melodies written by these men. The first songs that toddlers learn how to sing, simple nursery rhymes, are constructed on these melodies. When the toddlers later grow into children who express interest in choosing an instrument, they will be learning these simple melodies to grasp the fundamentals of their respective instrument. If you ask anyone, regardless of musical background, to name a composer, it is likely that they will answer with Mozart, Beethoven, or Brahms. Those with more advanced musical backgrounds might give you other names such as Dvorak, Debussy, or Schumann. Regardless of who exactly it is that the person names, it is quite improbable that the name belongs to a woman. After conducting a poll online, it is blaringly evident that women are not as well known as their male counterparts in the composition field. One composer who deserves more recognition for her contributions to music is Alex Shapiro, a name known by few musicians and in fewer households. Among one of the most fascinating facts about Shapiro is that, unlike our ancient grandfathers of music, she is still very much alive and actively enjoying life to its fullest. She even agreed to do an interview. Shapiro was born in New York City on January 11, 1962, so she is only 59 years old. Raised in Manhattan, she began composing as a child and wrote her earliest compositions when she was only nine years old. Shapiro attended her first composition lesson at age 15 during the Mann's College of Music summer program in 1977, at which time her instructor was Leo Edwards. During the two following consecutive summers, she was the youngest student to study under instructors Michael Zakowski and George Zantakis at the Aspen Music School and Festival. In the following years, Shapiro was educated at the Juilliard School's pre-college division and at the Manhattan School of Music as a composition major. She graduated from the Juilliard program in 1980 and left the Manhattan School of Music in 1983 after having been hired to write the score for an obscure documentary, a position which resulted in her subsequent move to Los Angeles. However, during her time at the Manhattan School of Music, she studied under instructors Elias Tannenbaum, Ursula Mamlock and John Corigliano. A few years after moving to Los Angeles in 1983, Shapiro relocated to Malibu. Until 1996, she composed only for movies and television shows. A small orchestra with which she was working for an obscure movie reminded her of her admiration for composing chamber music during this particular year. As the turn of the century and millennium loomed, Shapiro found herself composing only for the concert world and no longer for soundtracks of movies or television shows. Though not many of the musicians or composers of the concert world knew her, her career thrived on her previous Hollywood experience from which she harbored extensive knowledge regarding multiple aspects of music business. In 2007, Shapiro moved yet again to the state of Washington, where she now resides. Shapiro's compositions fall in the genres of acoustic and electroacoustic music. Her music for wind ensembles is unconventional and features a variety of different and extended techniques. After having composed chamber music for only nine years, one of the U.S. Army bands approached her with a commission to write a piece called Homecoming when she was 46. This commission would positively influence the remainder of her career. An excellent representation of Shapiro's style, Liquid Compass is an electronic piece for wind band that utilizes a pre-recorded soundtrack ordinary objects like water in a bowl as instruments, and unique extended techniques in certain instruments, for example, the uwa effect on flute. Commissioned by Carthage College, Shapiro composed it in commemoration of the band's 140th anniversary. In these segments of the piece, you can hear the different extended techniques that she uses. In the beginning, listen for water. She used water as a percussion instrument in combination with very thin instrumentation to create an eerie, uncertain mood of the piece. Now listen to the flutes in this next segment. The ominous growling you heard was the uwa effect, which involves growling softly into the flute while also fingering a note. This is only one of several extended techniques that Shapiro utilizes in her pieces. This final section, comprised mainly of chords, demonstrates the seemingly simplistic beauty of the entire piece and of Shapiro's style in general. Though it sounds simple, this passage requires the immaculate focus of the performers to perfect the tuning and move seamlessly. 
Almost every part is independent of each other with different entrances and note transitions. This is one of several reasons as to why Liquid Compass is a grade 5 piece. The Jacksonville University Wind Ensemble will actually be performing Liquid Compass on April 11th at 3 p.m. The composer may be in virtual attendance as well. Although Shapiro is known primarily for her compositions, she is also an experienced instrumentalist. For nearly 10 years, she studied as a proficient piano student under the direction of New York recitalist Marshall Chrysler. In addition to her experience as a piano player, Shapiro has experience of playing guitar and what she describes as mediocre flute. Her experience with the flute allowed her the knowledge of the unique extended techniques that she used in Liquid Compass. Since the beginning of her career, Shapiro has been awarded with several national honors and recognitions, which include those awarded by the American Music Center, ASCAP, the American Composers Forum, and Meet the Composer. She has also been honored with artist fellowships from the California Arts Council in the McDowell Colony, later serving on its board of directors. For the past 25 years, Shapiro has acted as a composer in residence and guest lecturer at numerous colleges and universities. In 2011, the International Music Fraternity Mu Phi Epsilon honored her with its most esteemed award, the Award of Merit, for her innovative use of unique technologies and techniques over the course of her composition career. Even in spite of the pandemic, she has continued to receive Greek Life honors this year. In 2021, Kappa Kappa Psi awarded her with its highest distinction while the University of Washington's Gamma Chapter initiated her as an honorary brother in recognition for her contributions to support music education programs through the pandemic. A woman of many trades, Shapiro is not confined to strictly composing. Her other passions include activism, public speaking, writing, and wildlife photography. Although Alex Shapiro is not well known by many in the concert world, her music deserves to be recognized for its unconventionality and fluid use of extended techniques. In our interview, Shapiro commented on her implementation of such techniques and stated, I never use an effect just for the sake of the effect. I use it because it has a texture of essence that's crucial to the music I'm hearing in my head. So by the time it's been incorporated into a piece, it sounds organic. She also commented on other topics regarding the nature of her compositions and sexism. After being asked to describe her composition style, Shapiro replied, highly eclectic. Some of my pieces don't sound as though they were composed by the same person, and I think that's really fun. The composer is correct in the observation that some of her compositions sound as though they were written by different people since she utilizes so many different techniques in each individual composition. Though Shapiro did mention writing a chapter on sexism in the world of composition, she claimed to have never experienced any such discrimination herself. In fact, she stated that she was hired many times because she is female. However, despite her decent experience of being a woman in music, she recognized that sexism continues to be a serious problem in the music world. Alex Shapiro is right. The least known composers of my poll were the women composers. Alex Shapiro ranked within the top three of the most unknown composers. The most famous of the poll were names like Beethoven and Mozart. It is crucial that we start giving recognition to our female composers, especially the living ones. Composers like Alex Shapiro are the future of music.